So I'm going to give you a very short, an hour was very short, half an hour was very short to actually have a discussion on what a mind, mind geologist does. But I've got a couple of slides in then and the general discussion which I can have with you on what is the role of a mine geologist. I started my career off in the deep level gold mines and I'll show you now where it started. And this is just a table of contents and we'll, we'll flip through the slides as we go. But essentially I'm going to tell you where I am, where I started off um, resource to a reserve. This is where all the mining starts. So this is post exploration site. The mining geology, what is the role of mining geologists to safety? I think that's very adequate. Geologists always often ask the question, so if I've measured the fracture and the indexes, what is my role towards the safety? I think there's a lot more that you can contribute towards safety. Um, what is the role of your geologist on the open cast mining sector and then also on the underground mining sector? So in short, uh, that's me, that's what I look like. I studied at the old UPE, now called Nelson Mandela, under Prof Rust, it's a crust. I did my master's through US and um, uh, Louisiana State University in WITS. I did a master's in WITS and then also another one at UPE. Um, essentially, I'm also trained as a Six Sigma coach. I'm a competent person in Eastern Iron Ore and Graphite, a member of the GSSA now for a couple of years. And I started my career in Goldfields in 1991. Um, getting into the geology is a different story. Um, I won't bore you with that, but I basically got lost at university and ended up in the geology department. Um, and it turned out that it was the best move ever. So I started my career off with West Fontaine, um, seven shaft PCR paddock sections, then six shaft um, carbon leader. I started off doing shaft sinking, nine vent shaft, and 11 sub vertical shafts. That was my introduction to mining, and I was in, always intrigued by the engineering and by the mining processes, um, both electrical, mechanical, and also on the mining side. So um, I started the, those deep level mines, um, and it definitely prepared me for more in life than I anticipated. And I always got involved in more than one thing um, on the mines. I then moved over to Northern Platinum where I discovered that groundwater can be very hot and under very high pressure, pressure systems. We worked extremely hard on Northern Platinum. It was a, a pothole reef um, for different facets, re-establishment of stopes and that type of stuff. Then I moved over to Samanco on the manganese side where I became a superintendent on projects, um, logistics, exploration, and continuous improvement. I then later on became the MRM manager where I managed the vessels at Momotuan open cost and vessels underground mine. Did the capital expenditure programs. I did the risk smart Buerta, which is now called UMK feasibility. TPs, um, studies, uh, feasibility work we did on Momotuan and extension. Middle plots, um, olive pan, olive wood, umtu, and then currently we busy in the Northern Cape on the Northern section, and I did the team up all the way to Gravenach and Avantir Basin. Uh, Postmas work, I did most of the mines down south. So in BHP Bulletin, also as part of the MRM manager for um, and the global team leader for um, representing South Africa in the mine planning sector from the manganese sector. I started in 2020, I have two sons, one is 21 and the other one is 17. Uh, the, aspiring engineer, the one is the expiring engineer at Stellenbosch University. And the second one, I think, is going to be a surprise. We're not sure what he's going to do. So basically, at the end of the time, I have a, I'm a typical mine geologist. I've got broken furniture, disorientated kits, and a full book of vaccinations. So in Minerom, we basically look at the exploration side. We pull that through onto the mining side, doing due diligence, sample grade control, on-site mine services. Um, we work hand in hand with the mine planners and the mine planning um, division. We also do geological block models for reconciliations. We have a geological section that um, looks at the, um, the watering of mines and also water supply, rural, domestic, and also on remote mining sites. And then we have a, a very busy and active training section where we do training for our corporate clients in Africa um, on project management, drill logging, sampling, geological field work, 
and whatever their needs be, is we actually capture their needs and then work it into a training program. We also do a lot of micromind training. Um, it's our software of choice. And uh, we deploy that through exploration, mining, geodiligence, hydrology, all the way through. Okay, so getting on with that. That's all our services. You can, you're welcome to look at our website. Also for a list of all the projects that we've done in the past. We're currently 14 strong um, and we're being supported by three fantastic admin ladies, French speaking, um, all the way through to um, financial controllers and accountants. So that's the team. That's myself, Graham, Yaku, Elma, um, Sully, Frank, Tristan, Philip, Sean, uh, Monique, Kaylee, our, our latest um, addition to the team, and then Ivan, our French speaking lady, and Karina. Um, this is the projects that we currently work on. We, all, we worked from Cyprus, Saudi, South America, Chile, um, Las Vegas, all the way through Madagascar. So we specialize in manganese, iron, gold, diamonds, chrome, rare earths, industrials, graphite, vanadium, platinum, REEs, zinc. Um, we basically do all the minerals. Um, that's available. So for my geologist, I think that it's appropriate to start the discussion with, if you think you're not in production, well, you are in production. You're part of your production team. You're part of your mining team. And you definitely have a big role and responsibility to play towards your team and understanding your, um, your role. So whether you open cast or underground, your geologist plays a major role on site on safety because you work with rocks because you understand them and because you understand structures, faults, dips and strikes, the contribution towards the safety of your overall team and your team members is actually quite important. You can play a big role in supporting your production team and also your safety departments and your co-workers in understanding this. So the safety starts essentially in the exploration side of things, where you do all your RQDs and your rock analysis, your joints, your geotechnical logging, your measurements. This then gets transformed, as you know, into your open cast mine design, your underground mine design. Um, for open cast, you essentially will be doing mapping of cycles, predicting joints, faults, fault planes, potential fall of ground, toppling, slope failures, uh, like recently happened in, in Scorpion Zinc, tragic events. Um, but I think if there's good data sets, we can always strive to. Um, to make our production members and our team aware of this in the rock mechanics. So you will be working very closely to the rock mechanic team. Underground, obviously stability, stability, monitoring of load bearing pillars, stresses and strains, understanding of those, mapping of fractures and joints, preventing of fall of ground situations and on-site observations. Cooling, cooling domes, cooling structures, um, that's quite important. Um, we got very involved in the late 90s on geophones, geophone implementation on mines, also on load bearing structures, depending on, on where you are, if whether you're in an underground mine or open cast, um, block cave, bottom pillar or deep level mines. So you're basically part of your team, you're the rock doctor, you can contribute um, in more than one way, apart from your normal risk assessments and your health and safety observations you can apply your mind and you can apply your, your knowledge towards your production personnel in making your workplace a more safe environment. So essentially, if you, if you end up on a mine, it all starts with resources. So a mine is not a mine if it does not have a resource base or a reserve base. So your exploration starts with the normal stuff to your geophysics, extensions of your iron ore, your delineation drilling, your definition drilling, the geological model, your metallurgical testing, your all models, your pit optimizations, scheduling, and then into your um, construction phase. Part of your geological model and your metallurgical testing and your all models, this is all 3D. We also bring in the structure and the structural components, um, especially during your pit designs and pit optimizations. So this is one of the examples which we use. Um, to illustrate the open cast exploration. This exploration project we did up in Namibia is the lodestone iron ore deposit. 
we've been working on the deposit um, since 2000, since 2010. There on the left hand side, you can see the exploration and the drilling. On the right hand side, you can see all the mine planning and the resource estimation that was done. That was the blocks that was done and the ore um, metallurgy. That culminated in a water optimization and a mine design and the structure. So that's typically what you're seeing. And your role as a geologist in assisting the rest of the team will be giving your input on where to place your mine dumps, your rock dumps, where or is where sterilization needed, required to be drilling, the type of material that you have, the densities. So you'll be part of the team as you go forward in the whole planning process. Once implemented, um, you start with mining engineers, you will develop a short range model, um, which you will use to deploy in your governance. And we've worked out that the total process will cost you more or less than one cent per ton, but the added value is you can produce 150,000 tons on spec every time, and you save a lot of money towards your mine. So that's a typical, what it looks like if you're running around in the pit, you've got some excavators, and you've got dozers and mobile equipment moving around, um, controlling your bench cuts and your bench um, designs is quite important. Over here, we did alluvial mining on iron ore. On the right hand side, you most likely are going to be ending up running your laboratory, doing your sample preparation, and also your on-site grade control, which is an integral part of your process, because you want to do your grade control and ensure that your grade meets the specifications. And after a lot of product and a lot of sweat, um, tears and a lot of sunburn, um, it all pays off. That was the first shipment of material going out of office bay. So underground mining is no different from open cast mining, apart from the fact that you've got a roof over your head. It's quite deeper, obviously, and you've got different rock qualities and rock densities and rock conditions that is going to be affecting you. You're also in a confined space, very important, and that you have to consider your ventilation. At least you're not going to get sunburn. Um, you have other hazards, which, which equates to water ingress or methane, rock force, rock burst, uh, failures, pillar failures. On the left hand side is a typical block cave with its drives. So the geologist will be taking this, to, this geological model, move that over into the engineering side, engineering designs and the rock mechanics will engineer the typical site on the left hand side. That's an underground deposit to show you. And on the right hand side is a similar deposit that is an open cast design. So there's a big difference between the two. So how do you get down there? Well, you have to dig a hole. Um, this is where I started my career. I started my career in going down a kibble. On the right hand side, you can see that bucket that's called a kibble. So you get inside a kibble and you go down for a thousand meter drop. That was quite a ride. That is a crab down there and the draw rig. So they blast, support the sides. And this can take months to dig a hole. I did a, a vertical ventilation shaft and I also did a sub-vertical shaft. So in these shafts, what's important is to understand the lithology, where you're drilling, and then also how deep the shaft is going. But more importantly is what structures and faults and joints and dikes are you getting through on these dike, on, on these shafts, and where will you be required to put long anchors in shot creek, additional split set support, long anchors and tensioning bolts. So that's a typical photograph of a platinum geologist on the left hand side, go geologist. You're always there in shins. It's very hot, it's deep, it's uncomfortable, it's shallow, it's, um, it's very, very confined spaces. It's a, it's a difficult environment to work in. But the fun part of all of this is that you can actually get inside the ore deposit. And this is really freaky stuff because you can see what goes on inside this deposit. You can live in it. You can live through that magma chamber as the crystallization took place. You can live through the stopes, through the uh, VCR, the channels, the migration, because you actually have the advantage of getting right inside the geological uh, deposit. In an open cast environment, you're not so closely associated to it. But the feel you get on the underground side is a lot more intense because you're right inside that ore body and it is very, very exciting. On the right hand side, you'll see a sampler. 
He's doing some channel cutting, channel sampling. That would be part of the job. And on the left-hand side, the geologist would, his primary function would be to understand that the mining team is on reef um, and that you've got the hanging wall control and that you limit the amount of dilution as far as possible. You will also do some underground drilling. Um, not only would you do exploration drilling, but you do cover drilling where you do water sealing, testing for methane and water ingress into the mine. And you will also do geotechnical drilling to understand the rock mechanic properties of the material. So the contribution of mine geologists is integral part of your mining process, um, not only from the safety side, but also from exploration, forward exploration, your ore characterization, and pulling that through into your ore models, your mine planning and mine scheduling and implementation. Your mining engineer is, is your friend, and you should be his friend. And the two of you are a very good team, and you should be working as a team. You will definitely have to do the on-site grade control. That's a whole science on its own. Stockpile grade control, life of mine planning, and then cut of grade control for underground mines. And that's on all the projects that we've been doing. Um, that's the team that top left hand side is up in Uganda. Um, drilling team in the center. We've got almost standing there in the, in the DRC. Um, we've got Kaylin logging some chips there in, the, in the Namibia. We've got Philip up in West Africa. We have Graham looking at some graphite down there. We've got Monique doing some lineup of draw rigs. You can see me there sampling some lithium material in the Congo. Frank on the top, on the bottom right hand side, looking at a large open cast copper deposit, and then Sully getting into the uh, graphite, doing some SC test work. So that's the team, and we offer a complete solution all the way from exploration through to the mining and into the hydro section. So we have a very diverse team. And thank you, and that's what it's all about: is uh, mining.